all know the old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder, but is that really true for everyone? On today's case, Mrs. Morell Thomas says that her wife's 92-day absence from their home has only made her fonder of one thing, the single life. From being evicted from their home to having a random woman pop up claiming to be in a relationship with her wife, Mrs. Morell Thomas says she's had enough. She's here in my courtroom and she's ready to sign the divorce papers today. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Muriel Thomas versus Thomas. Thank you very much. Ms. Morell Thomas, you say it's been 92 days since you last saw your wife and you are here ready for her to sign the divorce papers. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Morell Thomas, your wife is actually here today. Are you ready to see her? Yes, Your Honor. Robert, please have Mrs. Taja Thomas join us now. Sure. Mrs. Taja Thomas, you say three months away from your wife has actually given you a different perspective, but you're not ready to end your marriage. No, Your Honor. And Mrs. Morell Thomas, it has been 92 days. Why are we in court today? Your Honor, I'm in court today to end my marriage. Um, the defendant is my best friend. I thought she was the love of my life, but after seven years of sticking it out with her, ups and downs, through financial problems and cheating, I just want to call it quits. I'm here to sign these divorce papers today. You're done? Yeah. Ms. Thomas, you heard what uh, your wife said. She's been put through the ringer, according to her. I don't know what has happened before, but I know for the past 92 days you've been missing. What say you? I'm here because I want to save my marriage, no matter what it is, counseling. I'm just here to save it, just whatever it takes. Well, I'm not sure if whatever it takes is going to be good enough, so that's why I'm going to go on over here to Mrs. Morell Thomas and ask her to tell me how we started out and what led us to the point where we are here in divorce court. Well, in 2016, we were introduced through mutual friends. Um, we hit it off really quickly. Um, I really loved her energy and her spirit, and we were hooking up, hanging out, which was fine with me because I had just come out of a 10-year tumultuous, dramatic situation. So you were not really ready to jump right back in? No, no, not at all. Um, however, Taja pursued a relationship with me, and I agreed to it. Uh, she moved in, and 30 days later, she proposed. So, how quickly after she proposed did you actually get married? Six years. I just, I don't enter into my commitments lightly, so I wanted to make sure, I was sure that I was sure. So you were engaged so, for six yes. years. But you committed to each other in a monogamous relationship, at least in theory, very quickly. Yes. You've had a series of ups and downs health-wise. Why don't you bring me up to speed there? Well, in 2015, I got into a car accident. I was rear-ended on the expressway, mm -hmm. car totaled. Um, I was off my feet for a few months. I gained a bunch of weight mm -hmm. and started experiencing some health problems. Uh, so, yeah. So you needed some assistance? Yeah. No, I needed assistance. There were friends and family. She was a part of that. She was really supportive with helping take care of me and stuff, doing things that I couldn't do for myself at the time. Well, I am so happy to see that you are standing on your yes. own and you are doing Thank so you, well. <laughs> so, as I am looking at you, I know, though, that your recovery has actually become a bone of contention in the relationship. Yeah. Explain to me. Well, there were times when, um... I was feeling better and my back was getting better. I lost about 100 pounds. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, and uh, my mobility improved greatly. Um, I think the doctor just got really used to being there to do things for me that I couldn't do for myself. So there was one time in particular I can remember where we would go to the store and it's customary for someone to go and get a motorized cart for me to shop with. Well, this day I didn't feel like I needed it. I hopped out the car, my back wasn't hurting, I was gonna walk it. So Taja went to go get a cart and she had me sit in it. And I was trying to explain to her, like, I feel good today, I don't need it, I'm just gonna, you know, we gonna tough it out. 
But um, she just kind of got upset and was like, uh, oh, well, you don't need any help. You don't need me anymore. And I just felt like that was a little controlling or a little manipulative. So, so Mrs. Thomas, what was that about? Because I, I know that you were there while she was recovering and she needed a little more assistance. It sounds like you kind of liked her in that position. Not so much, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. um, I was so used to tending to her. Yeah. Because I know eventually she's going to say, oh, my back hurts. So that's another reason why I got the cart. Because mm -hmm. I know eventually it was going to be my back hurt. Can you go get me a cart? Mm -hmm. So that's why I took initiative to do that. It wasn't probably a good idea if she wanted to do something on her own. That was my fault. Mm -hmm. But I was just trying to show her support. Like, you know, this, you, you know your back is going to hurt. So just take the cart. It's okay to walk. I could ride in the cart while you're walking. If you get tired, you can take the cart. Well, I know that that can't be the real root of these, these issues that are between you. That doesn't bring you to divorce court. I know that money issues has been a major thing. Yes. Mrs. Merrill Thomas, why don't you tell me exactly what that's been? Well, we've had money issues throughout our whole relationship. Um, sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. Mm -hmm. When we're down, it gets pretty bad. Actually, one time we were homeless. We were evicted because we couldn't pay the rent and had to sleep in the van for a couple of months. But wait a minute, Ms. Merrill Thomas, do you work outside the home? Are yeah. you able to work? Yeah, oh, sometimes two to three jobs at a time if I can. I'll work from home and then do little side hustles or okay. take two full-time jobs if I have to. Because that's what you, one needs to do if you got to maintain a household. Yeah. And do what you got to do, right? Being the sole breadwinner most times, yeah. But you've been the sole breadwinner for most of the relationship? The majority, yes, ma'am. So, Ms. Thomas, why was Ms. Morell Thomas carrying the, the vast majority of the financial burden in the family? I have high school diploma problems. I went to um, a school and they cheated me out of my credits because I didn't want to walk the stage. There's this woman in Ohio who thought she was in a whole relationship with Taja. They had to go to Ohio to put a restraining order against this girl. She was threatening Taja's family. It got pretty bad. was this? Wow, years ago. And I keep trying to do stuff, look up places to get my GED or high school diploma, and either they're very expensive or the tuition is expensive. But wait a minute. Ma'am, you're 34 mm -hmm. years old and you live in Chicago. I live in mm -hmm. Chicago. They have free GED programs. What are you talking about? I don't understand that. If you want to get a high school diploma, you can get a high school diploma. Now, that right there is the lamest excuse. You 34. If you came in here and you told me you were 22 and you had not gotten your GED, we would have a discussion. But at 34 years old, there is absolutely no excuse that you have not gotten your high school diploma. What job you think you're going to get without having a high school diploma in the United States? How do you expect to do that? Do you expect somebody else to take care of you no, for that? No, I hustle a lot, Your Honor. I do whatever I can. That's what she don't tell you. I do whatever I can. Sometimes I have to ride Peter Pay Paul, and that even means family members. But you, you don't have a plan. This is what I'm. This is where I'm. I'm. I'm learning. How are you gonna be in a marriage without a plan? It's time for you to step up, don't you think? I mean, yes. do you think I'm being harsh? No. Me? No. No, Your Honor. Probably somebody has told you this in the past. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Morell Thomas, I bet you one of the people that have told her this in the past. Yeah, um, told her in the past and, uh, just, I knew it from the beginning, so it wasn't like it was something I didn't know, but it was something I was willing to help out where I could or work through and just... But then you say at some point it just became too much and the financial issues and the efforts at controlling turned into your suspicions of cheating. Yeah, I was really suspicious. I mean, a lot of red flags maybe I should have recognized a long time ago. Um, my friend says there was one time we were at home together sleeping, and her phone is just going off, going off, Texas calls, Texas calls. So I get up and I answer it, and it's a, it's a woman on the phone, and she just becomes immediately belligerent and just starts going off. Come to find out there's this woman in Ohio who thought she was in a whole relationship 
with Taja. And it got so bad, she was threatening. They had to go to Ohio to put a restraining order against this girl. That's how bad it got. But wait a minute, was, was there a real relationship or was it imaginary in her head? Um, she says it was imaginary that um, the, the girl just thought that they were together, but it was just conversation, I guess. And so was this Ohio random miscellaneous person basically stalking you and your family? Yes, yeah, she got to the point where she got on social media. She was making posts about me. Um, she was threatening Taja's family. It got pretty bad. Because somebody's feelings and emotions were involved, and that's what happens when play flirting occurs, because somebody get their feelings hurt. I found text messages with her and another guy planning to have sexual intercourse to have a baby. Your, your Honor, she, she's deflecting from what, where we were at the time. Y'all are not telling me something, so tell me the whole story. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. So then what happened next, Ms. Maria Thomas? We went out of town. Uh, we celebrated Sweetie's Day together. It was when we got home um, we got into a fight because I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and she wasn't in the bed. Something so, happened. I'm gonna come over to Miss yeah. Thomas because I know Miss Thomas, there has to be an explanation. What happened, ma'am? I found text messages with her and another guy planning to have sexual intercourse to have a baby. So what did you see with the text messages? Uh, her telling him ovulation. You mean her... planning? Yes, Your Honor. Ovulation, period, everything. But wait a minute. I thought you all were married, and it is a relationship between two women, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Your Honor. So was there a agreement that there was supposed to be a third party brought in? Yes, it was an agreement. But after agreement, it never went any further. We never talked about when, where, how, or any of that. She just did it all on her own. And so you felt as if you had been blindsided. Yes, ma'am. Your, Your Honor, she, she's deflecting from what, where we were at the time. Um... That's Y'all are not telling me something, so tell me the whole story. If the two of you had had the discussion, where did that discussion end? Where, what makes Ms. Thomas say that you violated the relationship? She felt the conversations that she was reading between the two of us on my phone were inappropriate. So what were those conversations? You know what they were. I obviously well, she don't. Well, said we were discussing, you know, when I was ovulating, just the, the details of us planning how we were going to go about it. And was, was your wife okay with the fact that you were planning an intimate encounter for the purposes of getting pregnant with this man? We discussed it, yeah. I, I thought I was being completely upfront and clear about everything. No, I wasn't. You know, I mean, yeah, you can tell them when you, you know, hey... You know, it's time, but all that, that extra the ovulating the period, that's too much. So, in other words, you thought that the, the conversation was not clinical enough. It was more personal. Yes. Okay. So, then you wake up in the morning and she's not there. No, what happened was I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning, she wasn't in the bed, and she was in the other room with the lights dim, with romantic music playing, and she's on the phone. 3 o'clock in the morning. So when I asked her who she was talking to or what's going on, why are you in here, she got upset. We got into a huge argument at 3 o'clock in the morning. She packed her bags and she left. And that was 92 days ago. So then what happened, Ms. Thomas? Where'd you go? I went to a friend's house to clear my head. I couldn't go back home. Was this family. a female friend? Yes. And was that female friend somebody that you had had a relationship with? No. It was just friendship. Just friendship. Nothing else. So for the last three months, that's where you've been? Yes, Your Honor. What has made you come home? Because I, I want my wife. Is that why she came home, Ms. Muriel Thomas? Not to my understanding. Um, and that's why I just couldn't really just grasp the whole giving it a, a thought of getting back together because I feel like a second option. She left and went to go be at this other chick's house. 
She was calling my... The other girl was calling my phone while I'm at work, harassing me, threatening me. What was she saying? Um, she was saying that they were together, that she, they were sleeping together, that she knew where I lived, she was coming to my house, she was gonna kick my door in and beat me down. So, Miss her... Thomas, Miss Morell Thomas said what you just told me is not accurate, that this woman actually started another campaign uh, of harassment against her. So, clearly, you were leading this other woman to believe that there was a relationship there. I mean, at the time, yes, because she was doing her, too. I felt like you was doing you, so I'm gonna do me. It was but I just, Did I not just ask this question? Too I much. asked you a direct question whether or not there was a relationship, at but you said, time, no, that was just friends. Beginning, at that moment, in the beginning, no, it was I no didn't ask you about no beginning. And you knew exactly what I was talking about. So, in other words, you left, you moved into some other chick's house, and for the last three months, you've been kicking it with this other chick. But let me guess, this other chick is no longer interested in being your side piece because you dipping and dodging, and she probably told you it's time to leave. I bet you. I bet you. I, I love my wife. That's my best friend in the whole world. But I can't lie and say that I'm ready to be married to her anymore. It's been enough time. I was sad it was a, one of the darkest times in my... Um... I'm sorry, it was just a really dark time for me. You know what I mean? Like, I've been going to church and I've been praying and I've just, I have a counselor, I'm in counseling and everything. And I was able to pull myself out of that really dark place. And I feel like now that I'm better and I'm not so emotionally just in the dumps and broken, I don't want to put myself back into that same space where it might happen again. You know what? It makes complete sense to me. I have to tell you. I actually think that is one of the healthiest things I've ever heard somebody in divorce court say. Thank you. That you've been working hard at getting healthy and the last thing you need is to bring somebody back into your life that was a part of your unhealthiness. Yeah. May I see the divorce papers, please? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Robert. Mm-hmm. So, Mrs. Morell Thomas, you actually filled out these divorce papers and you've signed them. Yes, ma'am. The only thing that's left for me to do is to actually ascertain from you if you see any room in this relationship for you to want to go back no. to where you were before. No, Your Honor. Would you like these papers served? Yes, please. Robert, please serve the papers. Sure. Thank you. Ms. Thomas, you've been served. Ms. Thomas, your wife has clearly stated that 92 days is 92 days too long. And it's time for her to get her joy and her happiness back. I don't know if you can earn your way back in. I can't force you to sign those papers, but I can tell you that they are signed. Mrs. Morell Thomas, I will provide you with a transcript of these proceedings. You may then go into court and start official divorce proceedings should you want to. Yes. And I advise you that this is the time for you to take back your life. Don't go down the path of having a child with somebody who is still behaving and performing like a child. This is not a foundation to build a life and a family on. Get your happiness back. And, Ms. Thomas, I think it's time for you to grow up, ma'am. If she didn't know, she knows now. 92 days mm -hmm. is 92 days too long. The 92 days seal the deal. 100%. So she better go find Ohio or mm -hmm. Kentucky or whoever the random chick is because she gonna need a new place to live. Oh, yeah. Made in Georgia.